Sunita, let me come to you now, because the other sector that we decided to focus on was the healthcare sector. It's on, don't worry about it. Uh, and, you know, I'll ask you this in the context of, again, the kind of demand and the kind of headroom for growth that we see uh, for the healthcare sector. The government, of course, has announced the Ayushman Bharat program, which is a very positive step, and we hope that it will build on the momentum. But just look at the numbers as far as healthcare is concerned. One nurse for every 1,000 to 2,000 people, 0 0.7 hospital beds for 1,000 people, the doctor-patient ratio at 79.7 per lakh, which is one of the worst uh, in terms of emerging and developing markets. I mean, the potential for this sector to be a multiplier, again, is significant. What will it take to get it moving beyond where we already are? And a lot of progress has been made, to be fair. So I think uh, if we were to look at it, what will it take to, to really get to what the government really wants to do? Even if you look at Ayushman Bharat, you know, there are three ways to look at it. One is how do you define success? Really, the government has created access, but on the same page, it's not really cre helped create the infrastructure. Mm. So we need to look at how do we create infrastructure. The second issue is that we need to look at cost because our cost, the cost structures in India are different from the rest of the world. However, we're doing it at one-tenth of the international cost. And it is becoming more expensive. I would like to mention taxation, just as Ajay said, because we had neg negative GST. We pay 33% tax, plus we pay customs duty. So delivering healthcare in India is actually very expensive. The third is quality. We came to India so that we could, you know, set up quality of international standards. Yeah. So there should be no compromise on clinical outcomes. So the government definitely needs to invest in skilling. And we need to double the number of doctors, triple mm. the number of nurses, and quadruple the number of paramedics. And to do that, they have to allow education, they have to allow the corporatization of medical education, and they have to allow infrastructure status and tax exemptions for health care. That's, really that's, a, that's a long list of demands is, for the government, is. and I, it's not a new list of demands either. This has been an often repeated list of demands. But you know, a larger question that I want to ask you, Sunita, in the context of, of health care and not just health care mm -hmm. services. Uh, but India has aspired for a commercial drug discovery for at least the last two decades since I've been tracking this sector. China possibly is on the verge of one. If you take a look at R&D spends, less than 1% is what India spends uh, as a percentage of GDP on R&D. It's 2.5% for the US, 2.5% for China, 4% plus for countries like Israel. What is the need of the hour to encourage the private sector? Because everywhere else, it is the private sector that focuses on innovation. What will it take for corporate India to innovate? So first, I think one level of collaboration. Uh, I think we need to work with the government with a sense of trust so that we know that, you know, that they know what we are capable of, so our clinical outcomes will be good. The second is that we don't do stage one and stage two clinical trials. So there's very little of uh, research and patents yeah. happening out of India. The third, I truly believe, is that, you know, we need to start thinking about how we, how much investable surplus our healthcare companies are making to actually invest into this. Mm. And if you look at free cash flows of many of these companies, they are stressed. They are stressed.